Hello guys, this is Student Investor. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top five mistakes new investors make in the stock market. And in this video, I'm going to be going over all the five things that you should look out for to help you invest better and smarter. So first off, congratulate yourself for actually jumping in and joining us and trading these stocks and joining the market and becoming an investor. It, it is very important that you take action. And the earlier you take action, you're really going to thank yourself when you build a future out with the market and with your different investments. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is the first mistake I see all new investors make and they just keep on for some reason this is like a common theme especially with YouTube and these hype stocks and these like really BS cryptocurrencies. Please research before buying anything, right? I keep on seeing investors new investors specifically make the same mistake on buying equities, stocks, funds that they have no idea what they own and they just don't understand why the price drops or why the price is rising or what is even going on to begin with right you don't want that so what you need to do is you need to research before buying anything you need to understand what is the business model how does that business make money how does that company make money how is it going to benefit you in the long term and why is a good investment for your time horizon specifically so right there's a few things i want to touch on and i actually made notes about it so I'm going to be talking about this. So as you can tell by looking at the screen in front of you, my biggest holding is Apple. I own 101 shares and I'm going to be going over the reasons why I hold Apple and it's simply just due to research. I take the time to research the stocks that I own. So right here, right now, I'm going to be going over why I hold Apple and why I believe it's a great long-term investment. By the way, not investment advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is strictly made for entertainment purposes only, right? So as an iPhone user and as a believer in the business model, I understand that Apple has a plethora, of like a, an, an insane amount of ways to make money. They have an Apple credit card. They have an incredible ecosystem where if you see an iPhone user, that user maybe has Apple Music. They maybe have some AirPods. They maybe have an Apple Watch. They maybe have an Apple TV at home. The, ec the ecosystem is incredible and their products work incredibly well with each other. And for the long term, the reason why I hold them for the long term is because I only think their profit margins are going to grow from here. And their branding is just incredibly strong. If you break an iPhone today, what phone are you going to get? Probably an iPhone, right? You, your AirPods give up. When, when one of them goes blank, you can't hear from it. What are you going to do? Get some AirPods, right? Maybe you want a credit card. What are you going to do? Maybe get an Apple credit card. It, it, it's just crazy all the products that they have work incredibly well and for an all a long-term outlook a market catalyst that i believe that will send apple soaring my opinion by the way yet again not financial advice this is not a buy signal by any means this is not me suggesting you go buy apple just listen to my research or listen understand that i've went incredibly deep with how i think about my stocks and why i hold them for the long term so i could be comfortable going five years out and looking at my holding of apple you know in the future and be like wow i made the right decision right so a uh, market catalyst that i believe will send apple soaring in my opinion in the long term is apple silicon i'm not going to go and explain apple silicon right here right now but basically they cut out intel if you know anything about cpus or how manufacturing works they basically now design proprietary Apple chips for Apple products that are now featured in the iPad, the iMac, and soon to be in future products. Who knows? Apple Car, maybe? Maybe. Um, but yeah, that is only going to increase revenue. That is only going to increase profit margin and is going to make Apple a very, very efficient company when it comes to grabbing that cash and recycling further features and upgrading upon the apple silicon for the f future iterations of upcoming products to come all right guys hopefully i didn't lose you with the research stuff there but hopefully you get the importance of doing your research so the second mistake the second biggest mistake i see new investors make all the time is not buying etfs etfs pay dividends and treat etfs like a wallet you could always come back to why because etfs provide stability to the bottom line of your portfolio you can always trust on the ETF to return and return well if you know their holdings and you research, going back to point one, you research their holdings. You see 
in their top holdings that you like the individual stocks that they have listed on the etf and that they hold and that you're comfortable holding as an individual investor that is one going to do two well actually it's going to do two things it's going to one judge the performance of the etf and two it's going to judge the stability of the etf so if you see some stocks there that you don't know do your research it goes back to the research as well but etfs are great they pay the dividends they add cash flow to your to your portfolio and they really support your bottom line so when things are red you're not completely you're not completely red and you're not hurting bad speaking of being down bad this brings me to my fourth point right this brings me to the fourth mistake or the fourth biggest mistake that i see new investors make all the time and it involves borrowing money it involves using leverage it involves buying options i don't know what's going on but looking at forums like the wall street bets there is a lot of people that use margin and there's a lot of people that buy options because they believe that if they buy these short-term options or borrow money that they can make an incredibly fast money it's not about making fast money what's going to happen is you're going to lose you're going to use margin you're going to borrow money and you're going to get burned because you don't know what you're doing you want to know what you're doing if you're not comfortable using your own money and growing that money to a point where you feel comfortable that you think you could handle investing then you're not ready to borrow money simple as that i have it here actually that <clears throat> you should wait for the first three years for the first three years you should invest only using your own money after that point you could maybe dabble in a little bit of margin but you need to keep your margin risk low in front of me uh, my margin risk is quite high i it is at 33 percent. that means i borrowed money and i used that money to buy other stocks and equities but it, it looks like that but that margin right do you want to know where that margin is at it's an apple it's an apple and vti you think those are going anywhere in the five-year term 10-year term it's not going anywhere had i used that margin to buy some penny stocks I'll be down bad guys. I I will be I will be in the negative. And you need to understand that margin isn't what it seems. Borrowing money isn't what it seems. Buying options isn't what it seems. It isn't for everyone. You really need to get comfortable with using your own money first and investing your own money before you even think about borrowing money because that is a problem and that is a situation that you don't want to deal with. If you get a margin call, it's going to be very bad. And what a margin call is, by the way, a margin call is when you have gone below a certain point in your account value that let's say this margin here let's say i overexposed myself to a certain stock like a bad penny stock and i used too much margin or i borrowed too much money that's what margin is robin hood could call me up and be like hey um we're gonna need that money back and um to recoup you know our losses and recoup the money that we gave you we're gonna need the interest and that you owe from borrowing all this leverage or, or borrowing all this money and on top of that we're going to liquidate your positions because we want our money now yeah brokerages can do that and you don't want to be in a situation where you wake up the next morning and you see your account down 10 grand and you owe money because you use margin on a very bad investment and now you have to work for the rest of your life because you need to pay back robin hood don't do that don't use margin you're not ready for it use your own cash for three years if it goes well then use a little bit of margin on good investments only goes back to the research and it goes back to the risk management remember that and now for the fifth biggest mistake i see new investors make all the time too understand your time horizon understand what you're investing for set a goal and then meet that goal at a reasonable time frame reasonable and when i mean reasonable i mean hey um i want to buy some real estate that's why you see the account in front of you in the maybe next seven years i think that's a very good milestone for, for me i'm 21 now so seven years would be when i'm 28 i think i could reasonably grow this portfolio at a steady pace to allow me to buy some real estate before i'm 30. but if you if you have this, this insane false reality and you think uh you're gonna make a million in a year because you said so and within a year you think that you can do that 
guess what? You're not going to outsmart the markets. You're not smarter than the markets. Wall Street loses money. Hedge funds loses money. Retail investors like ourselves lose money all the time. It's not you, you, you need to lower your expectations and be reasonable with yourself. You need to understand that you're new and you need to always learn and grow. This is not a race. This is a very slow paced jog to the finish line. You don't need to prove anything to anybody and you just need to understand that you are doing this for you and you need to take it seriously. It's not a game. You could lose serious money if you do it wrong. So set a time horizon, do some goal setting and be reasonable. If you want to say within three years, I want to invest because I want to have more money in three years. Very reasonable. If you say in one year, I want to buy a house. Not very reasonable. And that is it. That is the top five beginner mistakes that invest new investors make all the time. But because you guys have been doing great and the channel analytics has been telling me that you guys have been showing insane support. I mean, my first video has done immensely well and I'm so glad that I could bring such quality content to you guys and that you guys really enjoyed it. And I, I feel appreciated. I like it. So if you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So for that, I'm going to be treating you guys with a six bonus tip for you new investors. And the six bonus tip is uh, stop buying on green days and stop selling on red days, right? As a new investor, you should always program yourself to hold the money into your account and wait for a red day. Wait to buy the dip. Just buy the dip. If you buy the dip, you're going to lower your cost basis. And if you find yourself in a position that your cost basis is a little too high and the market has been doing great and it's green, simply be patient. Wait until there's a red day and only buy on red days. You should be selling on the green days. It shouldn't be the other way around. You shouldn't be buying on green days. What's going to happen is you're going to, you're going to raise your cost basis and you could get yourself in a situation where if there's a bear market or when the stock goes down, you're going to go down because you just raised the price at which you bought these stocks and it's going to hurt you just that little bit more. And that counts for the long term. It really does. And there's going to be plenty of dips on the way. You don't need to rush. There's always going to be a red day near or in the foreseeable future. It's always going to have a dip. Any stock, any ETF, anything is going to have a dip and you need to be ready to buy the dip. So you need to invest meaningfully and have the cash ready into your account. And that is another thing. As another tip, invest meaningfully and consistently. Just have the money automatically go into your account. Start with $25, $50, $100 every month and see where that gets you. And use the tips that you've learned from today's video and I guarantee you're going to do well. So with that, guys, I appreciate the support. It's insane. And I'm, I'm very glad that I could bring you quality content. If you haven't seen my first video, go check out my video about the Amcoin. And if you want to know a little bit about me personally, go check out my story. Go click on my channel and look at my second video. I think you guys will get a gist of, you know, why I started investing and why I think it's just so great. And I want you guys to know that I'm a young investor. I'm 21 and I want to teach younger people how to invest. So with that, guys, that is the end of this video. I'm the student investor and I'm logging out.